What is up, watch fam? I'm Anna. It is Wednesday, not Monday. Sorry about that. We'll get back to it next week. Today, we're talking about three vintage watches under $3,000. Let's do it. Boom, watch fam. This best watch category is something that is versatile, meaning you can wear it casually and formally, and it suits both situations very well. And something whose brand name or history um, has significance and carries weight. And obviously all these watches had to have movements that are reliable even till today, and whose movements are serviceable. And finally, you'll be able to find watches in one or all three of these categories in the Theo and Harris watch shop. Although after five years of running the shop, we've been able to expand our collection from, you know, $100 vintage swatches to $60,000 Patek Philippe perpetuals. Uh, our bread and butter in our home is, is this $3,000 and under, really $5,000 under a uh, vintage mark. We've been selling these watches for years and years. Christian and I collectively own all of the watches I'm about to mention today. And I have personally handled hundreds of these watches and so has Christian. Okay, let's get into our first category, which is Omega. Omega has been manufacturing watches since the early 1900s. If you haven't heard of them, have you heard of the Olympics? James Bond, the moon. We have Omega Seamasters and these no-name Omegas, which typically fall anywhere between $1,000 and $2,500. And then we have Omega Constellations that are usually $2,000 and above. What I like about the design in this selection is that there's a lot of room to play in case and lug design, dial texture, hands, numerals, and sizing. And the time that it was producing these watches, Omega really mastered minimalist design, so much so that it's almost unrecognizable from the Omega that we know today. That's not shade, I still love Omega. They're classic, usually quite thin, and anywhere from 35 to 38 millimeters. And even on the dressier side, they stay relatively conservative, which means that it's a very universal line of watches, whether you're more comfortable wearing something more flashy or something that's extremely pared down and casual. This category has arguably the most variation when it comes to design. All of Omega's movements are in-house, and in these three lines, you'll find a variety of manual, wind, and automatic movements, which should all be easily serviceable by any watchmaker. Side note, Theo and Harris does have a service center, so if you have a vintage piece that you need looked at or a modern piece, send us an email and we can help you out. Number two, the Universal Genève Pole Router. These watches near and dear to my heart are around $2,500. The name Universal Genève doesn't carry that much weight in the mainstream world, but in the vintage world, it definitely does. Gerald Genta, the famous watch designer of the AP Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus, designed the pull router for Universal Genève when he was just 23. It was his first watch commission. While it wasn't necessarily a groundbreaking design like many people consider the Royal Oak and the Nautilus to be, the pull router does have a sort of cult following in the online vintage community, and for good reason. The watches were originally designed to commemorate the Scandinavian Airlines system's newest flight route from Los Angeles to Copenhagen, which went over over the North Pole as a shortcut. As a result, the magnetism effect all of the timekeeping instruments on the flight. So the goal was to produce a watch that could handle the magnetic forces to be given to SAS pilots. And the pole router was born. The pole router was originally produced from 1955 to 1969, with several iterations building on the original pole router design. The pole router date, which is the watch that I own, as well as its no date companion, are the watches that are most readily available. So those are the ones that we're talking about. I don't know about pole routers in like famous watch collector collections, but I do see a lot of them at watch events and in collections that we've reviewed from fans and from uh, collectors that we know. So it seems like the pole router, uh, like owning one and being able to recognize one is kind of like a like a vintage watch enthusiast rite of passage of sorts. These watches feature twisted lugs and a textured concave index ring. The most common design is a bullseye and the date models have the indicator at three o'clock, which has a charming trapezoid shape. The pole router was initially in a 34 and a half millimeter case, but after that initial production, they were made in 35 and 36 millimeter cases. They're fitted with in-house automatic movements and early versions of the pole router had bumper movements, but then one year after that, they started producing them with microvers, which is basically like a tiny rotor that has its own little house within the entirety of the movement, which allows 
allows the movements to be thinner since it doesn't have to accommodate the rotor over on top of the rest of the movement. The movements are finished very nicely and they're readily serviceable. Mine ran perfectly for four years and uh, then I gave it into service and then everything shut down. So I haven't seen the ball router in like three months and it's still not fixed and I'm freaking out and I'm wearing my Casio and the Casio is great, but I really want my pole router. As I'm sure a lot of you know, I love my pole router. It is my one mechanical watch and it's been a wonderful one watch collection. All pole routers I think have a ton of personality. They have a really specific and cool history. And the 35 to 36 millimeter diameter range can fit in anyone's collection, no matter the size of your wrist. And I, I'll fight, I'll fight you on that. Number three, you knew this was coming. It's Rolex. Iconic, classic. Rolex is the only brand you can drink food or water. We're talking about the Datejust, the Oyster Perpetual, and the Oyster Perpetual Date. Watches that were worn on the wrists of Winston Churchill, MLK, and Anthony Bourdain, just to name a few. Rolex OPs and Dates are 34 millimeters and Rolex Datejusts are 36. They all have Rolex Oyster cases. Datejusts may or may not be fitted on the Jubilee bracelet. If if you are lucky enough to own a vintage Jubilee bracelet, it is one of the most comfortable and well-designed bracelets that exists in the watch world. Rolex is a champion of the comfortable bracelet. The dials are executed minimally and they are perfectly balanced. While all of these watches have a very simplistic and minimal design, there are a lot of styling options within the larger format. There's variation in bezel, in the hands, in the dial color, and the dial texture, in the indices, slight differences in the text sizes. There is a lot of room to play, especially if you go up into the $5,000 range, you'd be hard pressed to find a watch that doesn't fit every single kind of collector. All of these Rolexes will feature automatic movements, which were the first automatic movements to be mass produced. Again, serviceable and extremely reliable. All of these watches are smart and they're classic and they will last you your lifetime and probably another. We have a lot of videos about the Rolex Datejust and dates and OPs, and if you wanna see them, they're linked below. For now, just know that really any of the watches you could purchase from this category, the Omegas, the Pole Routers, or the Rolex Datejust OP Date, will look smart. They'll last a long time. These designs are original and they're beautiful and they're classic. If you can find one that's in good condition and has a movement that can be serviced and can be kept up, it is a pleasure to wear and it can really serve you a lifetime. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of these videos, then hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you know when we have new videos. And head on over to the watch shop for new vintage watches every week. See you Monday!